Hey guys, it's Finn here from Complete Body Approach and today I'm just going to talk a little bit about um, self-release, how to look after your muscles, how to look after your joints and get your body moving a lot, a lot better and a lot more efficiently. Um, there is a lot of content with this out on the internet now, which is amazing, like it's really good people uh, sharing all of their knowledge and sharing their information. But saying that, like you need to be careful when you're kind of just searching on Google, following people on Instagram and stuff, and making sure that you're doing things that's right for your body. And yeah. um, because if you're not, if you're not doing things right for your body, then like you sometimes can uh, put yourself at more harm and cause more issues down the line. And um, so just some of the stuff I'm going to talk about today is just kind of the the routine that I kind of follow where when I'm giving guidelines to clients and teaching them how to start tuning into the body and getting things moving a lot more efficiently for them. Um, so first thing first, starting off, like most people know what these are, foam rollers. Um, like these have had a lot of really good benefits uh, uh, in the past and help people a lot. However, like I do feel that they are completely overused and like not used in the most efficient way. Like it's not good enough just to sit in a foam roller, loosen out all that, all of that tight muscles and uh, and like, the tissue that's built up through there, and then think that's that's you done with your mobility stuff. And um, you need to be a bit smarter of how you're using it to get the proper results. Um, like if you're just focusing on, on releasing out tension in your muscles on the foam roller or the likes of the lacrosse ball and stuff, like you're only putting a band-aid on the problem. Um, so the big questions that you always want to ask yourselves is why is my muscles tight and why do I have to keep releasing it out? Um, and like what else can it do that's going to get things moving a lot more efficiently? Like for instance, one of the big ones you see in most people is like they absolutely hate using the foam roller on their ITB because every time they use it, like it's it's agony. But yet they keep just working, thinking, rolling out the ITB, and that's going to help fix the issue. Whereas the matter of the fact you need to be looking is like what's going on below. So like what's going on through your ankle, through your feet, through your knee. What's going on through your hips, through your spine that might be causing this ITB to tighten up and get that tension into it. Um, so as we're going to go through over the next couple of weeks, is going to through uh, little sequences and routines that you can start piecing together to get things working a lot more efficiently. So you're not just focusing on where the tension is and where the, the knots are in the muscle. You're working above and below to integrate the movements through it and get things moving a lot more efficiently for you. Um, so basically, when I'm working with clients, I, the stuff that I recommend is to like use this here stuff at the start, but that's just starting to loosen things out, get things moving, so you're, you're releasing out the muscles uh, that are a little bit tight and overactive. After you release out the muscles, the next thing you want to do is start mobilizing the areas. So like once you release everything out, you want to start mobilizing through the hips, mobilizing through the ankles, get all the joints starting moving through a good functional range. Um, and so like that means that the tension that you've released out in the muscles, you're starting to actually utilize that through the range and teaching the joint how to start moving a lot more efficiently. After you do the release, the mobility, the next thing you want to do is start activating the right muscles to kick in. So again, going on the ITB for example, like you'd release out through the tightness through here, maybe through and through your glutes, down in your foot and calves as well. Um, you can start doing some mobility work, get the hips moving nice and free, get the ankle and feet moving a bit freer, and then the next thing you want to do is start activating the right muscles. So like you might want to be doing some glute work where you're going to start strengthening up through your glutes, get get them activating a lot better, get your VMO and everything activating a lot better, get your foot mechanics moving a lot better as well. So then your ITB isn't going to pick up the slack, you're reteaching your body, you're reteaching the nervous system how to link everything together in the chain, and that's where you're going to get more of a long term effect. Um, so once you do the release, the mobi mobi mobility work, the activation of the muscles is through there. The last one you want to do is move. So the big things for this is start working through movements where you're going through squats, going through walking, and just working, to, like integrating the work that you've done previously, the mobility and everything, integrating that into your new movement patterns. So that's teaching your body how to start working and teaching your body how to link into, link into itself. So that's what's going to get on top of all of these issues. So over the next few weeks, stay tuned. Going to be going through a lot of different little routines for like that's going to help sort out stuff going on through your feet, knees, hips, back, shoulders, everything. Um, if you have any questions on any of it, just give me a shout. Thank you.